today we're gonna talk about this brand new gimbal. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Sam Park and today is a special day because the first gimbal I actually reviewed on this channel was Weeble Lab back in the day and here we are with Weeble 2. We've come a long way. Little disclaimer before we get started, Zhu and this sent me this gimbal, in fact two of them, and you may have seen my face on Zhu and's YouTube channel, I am one of their hosts on their YouTube channel along with two other YouTubers, so little transparency out there before we get started, they are not paying for this video and you know I do want to separate that channel with this channel so just letting you know. So yeah there's some downside to that but on the upside I was able to get this gimbal over a month ago <laughs> in fact and test the heck out of it, this is the pre-production model and this is the post-production model so I was able to use both of them and when I say use the heck out of it I mean it I use this during five wedding shoots so I am an official second shooter for Envo films so I shoot five wedding shoots that are like eight to ten hours long I have four other collab shoots and yeah I can say that I used the heck out of these gimbals so now that I gave you guys some context I'm gonna break this video down into two sections first part is gonna be the pro as in like what I like about this gimbal and the second part is gonna be cons what I don't like about this gimbal. So the first pro of this gimbal is the pure quality of this gimbal. Right off the bat you can definitely tell uh, everything on here is pretty much metal. There are a few plastic parts such as this power button and this cover for the focus zoom motor uh, control wheel. Other than that yeah everything on here it is all metal including the body where you hold it and you might be thinking like oh this looks kind of familiar. It's like I've seen this gimbal before especially the grip and this top part right here. Yeah, this flat surface that's on here. Hmm, where have I seen this before? It's like DJI RSC2 had a kid with the Remora fish. You know, that's that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> And I'm only halfway joking guys because this grip when you hold the gimbal yeah this feels exactly like the RSC2 in fact right down to the top where it's kind of hanging on top of your fingers now I do like this a little bit better because your thumb is resting on top of this signature L shape which is very common among all Weeble but this time around none of your grip is actually hitting any of the buttons so when you grip it tight yeah, every button is out of your way, so which is a huge plus with this version. All right, so let's go over some of these buttons. The first button I'm gonna go over is this record button, and this isn't any kind of record button because it actually allows you to halfway press as if you're like pressing down a shutter button on a camera and you might be thinking like this is for video why would I even need that that's because cameras like a7s3 if you're using an autofocus lens and put it on manual focus you can halfway press to gain automatic focus briefly to get that target in focus and then you let go it's gonna stay there so that is very useful and this button does have a really good feedback when you press it so it does feel like you're actually recording something so I like the feeling of that and the next is this joystick and this joystick is a much upgrade from our last previous generation little dial because you're able to control the rate of the movement just by pushing it a little bit or all the way down so that feels really really nice as if you're controlling something in a little game controller or a drone. And we're going to skip over this mode dial thing, um, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but I want to talk about this focus slash zoom motor control dial. Now I should probably say focus slash zoom slash ISO slash aperture slash shutter slash precision manual electronic focus ring. That's what this is because it does all of that, especially with new cameras like Sony a7S III, which I'm filming right now. Unfortunately, it can't do that with Sony a7 III, but I have to say it works really, really well with Sony a7S III. So long as you have the setting correctly, so if you have the PC remote on on your Sony camera, I should say a7S III, yeah, the record button works and you're able to change the settings so you can control your aperture smoothly, ISO smoothly, or whatever you choose on the menu. So we'll talk about that menu screen thing later, but before we move on, I want to talk about this axis lock because it was such a weak point in Weeble S. The quality on this is much improved, guys. So when you lock this and unlock this, you can feel that pin being much stronger and it's not going anywhere like Weeble S. I know that was like the first thing it will break on Weeble S, right? And the positioning of these axis locks are much better, which leads me to my next point. There are a lot of design cues on this gimbal that are very user centric as in it gives you better user experience. Now this gimbal isn't perfect so I am going to talk about some of the flaws on the design cues but let's talk about the good stuff first such as the access lock positioning. So all the access locks are actually facing the user unlike Weeble S the access lock was actually behind a motor which kind of makes you look like you don't know what you're doing on set because you know you're constantly like trying to not to look at but you know like I know how to unlock my gimbal where's 
Where the heck is the freaking access lock? Yeah, that's no longer the case. All the access locks are facing you directly. So there's one right here, so you can unlock that. Obviously, this one is facing directly upwards, so you can unlock that, right? So everything is facing up towards you, so you can unlock and lock the access lock really easily. Little things like that really add up to give you a better experience on the gimbal. Another thing is this tightening screw for your balancing. So this screw here is actually a lever control, right? So you're able to tighten it really, really tight without, you know, skinning out your whole entire finger. So if this was a thumb screw that's round, first of all, you're not gonna be able to tighten it that tight. And other thing is it's gonna actually hurt your finger going forward. And every single thing that tightens on here, it's actually a lever driven thing. So yeah, like that's not going anywhere. And of course the last design cue I wanna talk about is this flip out screen right here. So let me go ahead and turn the gimbal on. This 2.88 inch screen is what controls the whole entire gimbal setting and modes. And it's a little bit smaller than my camera screen. So it's pretty big for a gimbal. So I'm able to switch different modes. And the key here is that I'm able to jump to a mode without going through and cycling through a different mode, which is important because when you're shooting and let's say you want pan follow mode and you want to go to follow mode directly without going through another mode, yeah, you just got to push follow mode and you're right there. And you might be thinking also, okay, but I don't like to touch things on the screen when I change modes, is there another way? And yes, there is. Uh, remember that little dial thing on the physical dial right here? So there are three modes you can cycle through. So pan follow, lock mode, and follow mode. So if you prefer that, it's right there for you. In fact, there's one more mode on this. Traditionally on a Juin gimbal, when you press the trigger button, it goes to a follow mode. But on this one, when you hold down the trigger button, it goes to POV mode. So physical control wise, you have those available for you but if you want to access to all the modes and there is one more new mode on this gimbal and that is portrait mode so if I hit portrait mode it does go vertically in case you want to go TikTok all of a sudden in the middle of your shoot which nothing's wrong with that because I just started TikTok also so I, I get it so according to Zhuin this has about four kilograms of payload which equates to about 8.8 .8 pounds and throughout the gimbal cycles that we had yeah this number doesn't mean much because yes the gimbal can't actually carry that weight is it stable at that weight is another question, right? So I would have to say this gimbal is somewhere between Weeble S and the Crane 2S in terms of how it feels and the power of this thing. The problem with Weeble S for me, I actually start using cages. So I would put a heavy Sigma 24 to 70 DG DN lens on my Sony a7S III with cage and with the focus motor. It does get a little bit heavy. It can handle it but there's no headroom, whereas in this feels like there's plenty of headroom when you're using it. So Juwon also states that this new chip has the interruption detection, and that is if your hand is not giving a smooth motion, it is able to detect that and smooth that out for you. And I found this to be very true while I'm doing like a full running shot with the rotating shot together. And the best way to describe for me is that it feels like it has responsiveness to it, yet it's very smooth. So you do have control while you're doing that. And a lot of times those moves are kind of hard to pull off, but I felt like this was easier to pull off that move than like Weeble S. One thing that I did notice that it is actually very, very, very smooth upright position, but when you go under slung and you do that same kind of rotation move, I did find that had a little bit more jitter to it, only because comparably upright is very, very, very smooth. And what's also good about this gimbal is the fact that with that much payload, it has plenty of cradle space. Cradle space is what I call how much space you have in this little cradle to contain your camera. And you can see like back part of it, you have plenty of range for motion. I mean like I have like over an inch with this heavy Sure lenses over here. Now it doesn't give you plenty of space on the right side of this gimbal. So if you have a really weird shaped camera such as Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which is not really pocket, I mean like the 6K version, you're gonna have some issue. The 4K, there's gonna be limited lenses you can actually put on there without having like a heavy counterweight. But I had no problem with Sony cameras or regular shaped cameras with heavy lenses. Again, if you wanna check the camera body and the lens compatibility list, it'll be in the description. All right, so let's talk about the cons of this gimbal, AKA the limit you should be aware of no gimbal is perfect so there's definitely some things to talk about here so the first thing I noticed and one thing that broke my heart is the fact that you cannot put trans mount quick release plate onto this new Weeble 2 let me show you so on Weeble S I could put this trans mount quick release plate onto the bottom and onto the actual underslung section of the gimbal so during a shoot you're able to quickly release that tripod and then put it on the underslung mode and you're ready to go right so that was really good because I did not like little gimbal pendage like in my face. So you could technically have a tripod here and leave another tripod there. 
but yeah, I, I just don't like that stuff in my face. So I think that when you have a tripod on the bottom only and you have nothing sticking out, you're able to do a rotation shot a little bit better. But again, that's personal preference. So this Transmount quick release plate is much larger than the one that would go on the Weibo 2. So if you get like an upgraded package, it does come with this proprietary quick release system, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But the problem is if this goes on here, you cannot swing out the actual screen. It hits there. So kind of bummer on that one. So let's talk about this underslung handle over here. So they do give you this underslung handle, which is by the way, very high quality, just like this gimbal handle here. Yeah, this comes with the combo package, which is the one right above the base package. So what you're able to do is they send you this little quick release system, which is good. Uh, it does come loose after a while, so you have to really, really tighten that with the hex key, right? And then the problem is now that that's so tight, which is good because it feels secure, this doesn't go in as easily. So once it's locked, it's kind of in there for good. You can't just like pull that in and out during a shoot. So that's something, you see what I mean right here? Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's coming out. So that's something to keep note. Now I do have a little hack for that coming up in the next few videos possibly. So what I'm gonna do is put a little spacer between that screw and the gimbal. So I'm gonna give a little bit more space for that screen to pop out. So that's coming up in the future video possibly because I, I really wanna use that system. <laughs> so the second thing you should be aware, of, especially if you're coming from Weibo S, is that they did go away with the Arca Swiss system. So this is the plate that comes in in Weibo 2 now. So this is a Manfrotto plate a solid one that is is very similar to the crane 2s in fact it's exactly same size so it is interchangeable in a sense in fact i have it right here this is actually a crane 2s plate which fits on weeble 2 just fine so it is interchangeable so it's nice that you can have weeble 2 as a backup gimbal if you have crane 2s for example but what breaks my heart is i really 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 like the weeble s uh, quick release system so let me show you real quick so this is technically a Manfrotto plate, right? So the base plate is Manfrotto, but with the push of a button, you have an Arca Swiss. This allows me to go to handheld from gimbal really, really fast. In fact, like milliseconds, right? So you have it right here, camera's here, bam, I'm on handheld. So you can't do that with Weeble 2. So Weeble 2, if you wanna take out the camera to go handheld, you do have to slide the whole camera out. And if you didn't remember that little notch and the number, yeah, you're gonna to have to rebalance your gimbal after you put the camera back on the gimbal. Now, I am gonna do another hack video on this. They do sell small rig like Manfrotto to Arca Swiss plate. That's really meant for DJI RSC2, but I'm gonna to try to see if it works with Weeble 2. So that's gonna be in the future video. Just keep in mind if you're using Arca Swiss like I am. So the third thing you should be aware of on this gimbal is that the battery is all built in. In fact, the whole entire handle mechanism is part of the body, which is good because you don't get that rickety rick, like shaky, vibrating body anymore. Everything is so solid, but I cannot change the battery once I run out of battery. So on Weeble S, right, we had this 18650 batteries, which I love. I had so much of these. These are so cheap. So I'll bring extra one of these, especially when I'm traveling. So I have extra batteries just ready to go, especially during a wedding shoot too. Um, so this battery built in is nine hours rated, which is kind of pushing it during a wedding. Like most weddings are eight hours, nine hours. So depending on your gimbal usage, right, the type of moves that you do, possibly putting a motor on there. So that's a little bit too close for me. Yes, you can charge gimbal while you're using it but because this is such a high capacity battery that little power bank that I have is just not sufficient enough to charge this while I'm using it and you're gonna hear mixed bags of opinion about this battery especially during like first week of reviews because the pre-production model of this gimbal yes the battery drained really fast and it was really hard to charge up whereas in post-production especially with the new firmware the battery rate is much better however I still have to stress that this is a high capacity battery meaning you're gonna need some powerful chargers for you to actually like charge this properly. So this battery supports up to 20 watts when it comes to quick charging. On a PV charger, it does support up to 25 watt, but yeah, just keep in mind that little tiny, little dinky, like two watt chargers, yeah, it's not gonna charge this gimbal fast enough. So the solution here really is to fold the screen up when you're not using it, because remember, this is a very bright screen that's draining the battery. And let's say you don't wanna do that and you wanna keep the screen out constantly, just ready to go. What you could do is press the power button once, 
oh, and then screen goes off. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. So another way is that let's say you're not using the gimbal, but you don't want to like turn off the whole entire gimbal. You could press the power button twice and it will go on standby. So yeah, there's no power there right now. So if you did all that, you could last through a whole entire wedding. My last wedding I shot with this was 10 hours. So after about 10th hour, yeah, I had about like 15% battery left. So yeah, let's talk about that button placement. If you guys noticed, the power button is right behind the screen. So when you have the screen tilted towards you, I, I can't get to the power button, guys. I have to like tilt the screen down and then I can get the power button, which is a shame because this doubles as a standby button and also doubles as turning off the screen button. So that's a little bit of design flow that I had to kind of get used to. Now, there are other functions of this gimbal that I haven't really talked about on this video, maybe for the future video, is this image transmitter. So if you get the Pro version or the Pro Plus version, you get this image transmitter. This looks like the second generation image transmitter from Juwin, however, it is not it's actually version 2 of the second generation it's got this letter AI on it so this is made particularly for Weeble 2 and it combines also with this thing called Master Eye so Master Eye combined with the image transmitter AI with Weeble 2 it makes this whole package where you can control your gimbal and see what the camera is seeing which is super cool and there's been another firmware out for this transmitter and the receiver so I do want to fully test that out before actually making a video so that's going to be in the future video so I mentioned there's some upside to being a Juwin host and that is all my viewer gets additional 5% off by using a coupon code that's going to be listed in the below description. So whatever list sale price is, you can take extra 5% off with that coupon forever. That coupon code does not expire for the Juwin official store. And I should also mention that I was able to collab with their local filmmaker. His name is Caleb. We shot of tons of content with Weeble 2. So I have a lot more Weeble 2 content coming up. You should definitely check out Caleb's channel. I'll also link it in the description below. And here are some sample footage straight from Weeble 2. No slow-mo, 24 frames per second, and no warp stabilizer, of course. So here's some sample shot. Until next time, guys, stay stable.